I'll, I'll give you an example. So if we get to this position, and I have no problem saying this, of course. Um, but if you if you get this position, if I, let's just say I plug this position in on a regular computer, for example, it might show this H4 move or this position after castles as being okay for black at some point, but it's going to probably take like 10 times longer. So for example, if you plug in H4, I'm betting on a supercomputer after D6, H5, H6 castles, it probably already says this is equal for white. Whereas on this computer without... Um, without or without any depth, it's saying that black is better. So it might take this, this computer on the website, like let's just say 10 to 20 minutes to calculate that this position is equal for white, whereas on a supercomputer after like a minute, it might say it's equal. So you, again, how long are you really gonna let a computer sit in this position to do the calculation? That's really what it comes, comes down to. Sitting and waiting, can I hear the music? No, I can't, okay, we go. So let, let me make a move, let me minimize this, of course, and we'll keep going. All right, plays d5. I think I'm going to play b3. I remember Laquang Lam likes the big center position, so I'm just going to try to keep it very, very slow and simple. Waste and below reveal. Good one. Oh, right. Of course, go to emote mode, and I'm closing chat too. Um, hmm. I guess I'll play e3 and bishop e2 maybe. Go here, maybe h3. I mean, bishop e2 is always a move. I can also just go d3, knight bd2. Seems pretty standard so far. Very slow approach. A5 is kind of interesting, actually, this early in the game. And A4, B4. I'm probably just going to go knight d2, bishop e2, and just develop normally here. I mean, I don't really see any reason not to. Okay, he does it. What's he, he plays C5. Very interesting. So Laquang Lam is actually like, he's he's going for something immediate, which is very interesting. Okay, I'll go knight bd2 here. I think the reason that I'm actually a little bit skeptical about this approach is because I think I have some C4 and D4s here. Let's go d4 and c4. I don't really believe in this somehow. This seems questionable. I mean, I could have played h3 first, but this just doesn't look right somehow. Go c4. This doesn't look right. I mean, I guess he has outside pawns here in this line, but again, I'm, I'm just not really believing in this. Okay, it goes there. Question is, do I play h3 or bishop d3 first, or even just bishop e2? Now, I could also take which is kind of interesting. Play bishop d3. It's a structure in that. That's actually a very weird structure if I trade. Strange, very, very strange structure if I trade and play bishop d3. Hmm. My instinct is that I should not. I think I'm just gonna go, hmm. What do I wanna do here? Let's think about this. You can also play like queen b1 maybe and just capture. I mean, I guess the idea is he's saying that he can take the pawn and get a tempo. Which is pretty reasonable. I'm just going to take. I don't know if this is right, but it's very strange structure here. Very strange structure. He's going to take, I assume, with the pawn. But the thing is, he's also still missing some stuff here. So it's very, very weird. Really not sure what to make of this. This could be good for me. This could also potentially be bad for me. But I, I don't know. I feel like I'm doing okay. We'll see what he does. I mean, basically the only advantage black has here is that I'm a little bit behind in development. I'm like one move behind because I played D3, D4. But otherwise, I think I, I'm relatively fine. Now, I mean, he can take with the queen, but I think bishop c4 and just castles looks very good. He can take with the pawn too. All these moves seem fairly normal. Okay, of course I go bishop d3. I'm going to castle my king, maybe play h3. Question is this either this if, if I can get rook b1 and pressure on this backwards pawn, I should be better. If I can't really get pressure on the pawn, then and he can go b5 or something, it might not be all that wonderful for me. But I feel like I can't really be worse here. And again, in, in a game of 10 minutes, especially knowing that I should object, uh, should, of course, being a keyword, be a favorite in a blitz game, I mean, I should never go too insane. But we will see, of course. He's thinking for a while here. He hasn't come up with an with an obvious move. What he's gonna do? What is he gonna do here? Plays queen a5. Now I thought that was a reasonable move. Not maybe the move that I would have expected, but okay. Obviously I have to castle. Only move. Uh, if I don't castle sooner or later, I'm gonna end up in trouble. I mean, he can go b5, but I, I mean, I have queen b1. I have knight e5 ideas. I mean, a very strange kind of position that we have here. 
Okay, he does play b5, so he's trying to go b4 right away. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, I do have queen b1, maybe? b4, knight e5, takes, takes b8, 3, ef6, cb2, f7, takes, bishop h6, takes, queen a1, queen d2. I'm in very, very sharp position, potentially. Queen b1 seems like the right move with knight e5, but I have to calculate that. Knight e5 takes, takes b8, 3. Ef6, Cb2, Fe7, Ba1, Bishop H7, King H8 takes, takes, Queen A1, Queen D2, Queen A4 is fine, King H7, Queen D4 should be fine. I'm going to trust my instinct, I think, and just play it. It's a little bit risky, too, but you know what? Okay, wait. 95, 95. EF6, CB2, EF7. Takes, takes, F8, A1, 2. D2, D2. Very sharp. But you know what? I don't want to spend forever, so I'm going to play it. And the idea is that I play 95 next move. That's that's what I'm banking on here. I have 95. I, I have uh, rook, rook C1. We'll see how this works out. This is what I'm banking on. Pro only problem here is my rook in the corner is not very well placed. That's the only real problem that I have here. But I'm going to go knight e5. This is exactly what I'm banking on. This is what I'm banking everything on. And either it works or it doesn't work. But there's really no going back at this point. So I have to do it. Let's see what he does. Will he play b4 or not? That's the big question. See. Again, I suspect that I'm okay here. But I, I honestly am not 100% sure. But my instinct is that I should be fine. I mean, worst case, I should be able to draw this. So we'll see what he does. Because because knight e5 is, is, is the, basically the only idea that I have here to open up the diagonals. That's, that's what I'm banking on. I also can maybe go rook c1 as well, though, to hit the knight. So it's he has to come up with something. And it has to be pretty good here, actually. It has to be pretty good. Like, even b4, I can maybe even just take, honestly. I think, I think, I'm, I think I'm a little bit better here. Just an instinct. Just my instinct is that I think I think structurally I'm doing well. I think I should be good here, but we'll see what he does. Obviously, because there, there are many there are many different possibilities for both sides. He's thinking. Has not made a move yet. Still thinking. Okay. Now there is, I believe, increment. If I'm not mistaken, there is increment. This is not. There's no. This is not flat. So it's ten plus two. So that, so again, you can't. I can't ever really flag anybody per se either. Now again, he goes for this line. Interesting. Okay, so I take king f8, queen a1, queen d2. I mean, I feel like I have something here, but I, I do need to be careful how I play it. So, okay, so I. I mean, either I go knight e5 or I don't go knight e5. I mean, I have rook c1. Don't really love it. AB4, knight b4, knight e5 maybe is also kind of interesting. Hmm. So many options here for me. I'm not really sure if any of them make that much sense other than knight e5. Okay, I guess I just calculate knight e5. Takes, 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 takes. Bishop h takes, ba1, bishop h7, king h8. I take the rook, he takes, I take, he has to go king h7. And then, I mean, I assume that after queen d4, bishop e6, knight f3, that I mean, I can't ever really be in danger, I don't think. Maybe I maybe I can be in danger. So he does have f6 there, but still check, knight d4. What's the material count is even? I don't buy it. I'm not buying it, so I just have to make sure. Knight e5 takes b8, 3, ef6. db2, f7. If rook b8, I take h7. No, if rook b8, I make queen. He has to take the rook. I take. He has to go there. I take. I take. Queen, king h7. King h7. Queen d4. Bishop e6. Knight f3. F6. Queen d3. King g8. Knight d4. I just don't believe. I just don't believe that that can be bad. So I'm going to go for it. And hopefully I'm not blundering something. We'll see though. His line of calculating is takes, 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 takes. King h8. Takes, takes. Queen a1, if queen d2, queen a4, I'm fine. And if he plays 
king h7 i go queen d4 bishop e6 okay it goes for it okay we're gonna get this exact line i guess so i take okay, and then i take of course I mean, we're literally getting this exact line and we're gonna see what happens because i think i'm okay here but again we'll see okay i take he's gonna take i'm gonna flick the check take the rook and take the pawn and like either this is either this is good for me or it's or it's not good but again i don't think i can lose in this end game and i feel like i have i should be okay here i mean he has to take the rook i don't see any other move but he is thinking here which is kind of interesting did he miss this or did he miss bishop h7 in between he might have missed bishop h7 in between that is always possible that he missed the in-between check um but we will see of course because yeah he shouldn't be thinking here the fact that he's thinking here is a very bad sign it means that what <laughs> what dude what i literally just said this in my analysis i just make a queen i take and dude like dude what is this seriously uh no no bueno no bueno okay i guess i mean this is just winning i'll go queen d4 can't take the knight because then i fossilize him with bishop h7 okay so this is just winning now i just need to take a deep breath <sighs> take a deep breath relax and just find the win winning line here knight f3 is obviously very good here knight b3 is also very good too rook a2 is probably good um but yeah, I think just knight b3. Eventually, I'm going to put the knight on d4 and you just resign. Yeah, this is just game over. What, what, what is this? What even What even is this? Very, very bizarre by Laquan. I guess he just missed that I make the queen, but like, bizarre. How bizarre, how bizarre, how bizarre. Now, I think after queen c5, I mean, he kind of has to trade. And then, I mean, then that should just be, I should be able to mop it up. But... I don't really want to make this messy, so let's let's go here, target the queen. And now I will go, and queen c5 is the obvious move, which should just be winning. But you know what? Let's not even gamble. Let's not even gamble. Let's just go bishop b1, bishop a2, blockade the pawn. I can move the knight, open up the diagonal, and just win very smoothly. No need to no need to make a hash out of this. Just no need to make a hash. Let's go here. Pawn is blockaded. I mean, he has rook b4, but queen d2, or even even queen c3, probably, and it's just like, just a disaster. Very surprising from Leclong. Normally, very very stable. Very surprising. Very surprising from him. Just blockade the pawn. Pawn isn't going anywhere now, and eventually, I just can even stack and play knight c5 again. Long term, the knight's going to play. Also, this this iso does not help. This isolated pawn. Bad bad news. Bad news. Bad news. Bears um plays h6 logical move now i'm just gonna go i think I, I mean queen c5 is probably good i can even just play h3 here but what is the cleanest way to win i guess is the question knight c5 rook b2 should be winning i go queen c3 i mean the question is is queen c no i mean this has to just be winning yeah i mean this just has to be winning if this isn't winning i don't know what is i go here blockade Probably he'll play rook b2, desperation. Again, I don't really know why I allowed this, though. I didn't need to allow rook b2. Kind of a little bit careless by me. But again, everything should just be winning here. So I just have to make sure I don't blunder. Bishop b3, queen f6, rook f1 looks pretty clean. Bishop b1 to go for a mate also maybe is good. But I think bishop b3, a2, queen c3 is just the cleanest way. So bishop b3, queen f6, rook f1 a2 queen c3 and i just win yeah yeah i just win i mean but wait but bishop b3 he does have rook c8 but then queen a3 yeah this is just winning yeah this is just winning okay good good stuff so bishop b3 if he goes rook c8 queen takes a3 it's just game over he plays a2 i play queen c3 to trap the rook and if he goes queen f6 here i think i just go rook f1 guard the pawn everything's again collapsing very good should just be over i mean unless i'm missing something although wait i did realize i might be missing something i realized after rook a3 there's some rook c8 rook c1 weirdness there's some weirdness here with like if after rook a3 is some rook c8 queen before rook c1 there is a touch of weirdness so i do need to stay focused and not not blunder 
But again, I mean, this this has to be when I'm just up at night, and I just have to mop it up. I don't even have to actually take the pawn right away either. So yeah, this just winning. Let's see what he does. I don't really see any moves that even make sense here for black. This this just looks over basically. Let's see what he does. Move the mouse off a piece so that I don't accidentally make a huge mouse slip. But this this should be over. I mean, maybe we'll play something like G6 or something, but I guess even G6 I can just trade and then take A3. So, yeah, this just this just looks winning. With the cursor off. Again, one thing you don't want to do is when you're doing analysis, especially when you're, you're playing a slower game, you got to make sure you take the cursor off the board because that way you avoid accidentally, like like I was high, near the king, I, I avoid just randomly going king h1 by accident. You, you have to make sure to, uh, to, to not do that. Now he goes g6, which is actually... <laughs> hilariously enough exactly what I thought was the only move but now I think I can just okay wait if I just take rook b3 I mean this just went though I just take I mean fe6 I even have bishop d5 which is winning I think but I mean what rook f2 I have knight d4 so he, rook f2 is no good queen e6 loses to bishop d5 so he can't take with a queen can't Rook b3, knight d4 is over. Fe6 is the only try, but I think I can even just take d5. And then I create the pyramid of Giza after bishop d5 and queen d5. So it should just be winning. And again, I take my hand off the cursor to avoid any kind of accidental mouse slip. Let's see what he does. I mean, this is just over. Or is it? Or is it? He has queen e5 there. Wait. Wait. He has queen e5 there. I really just... Well, I mean, I guess I can also just take rook f8 and go bishop c2. That actually looks very clean as well. Because I wanted to take, but after queen e5... I mean, I can take and take and play an endgame up two pawns, but... That's that actually though is a guaranteed win. After rook a3, rook f8, bishop c2, are there any tricks is the question. Aha. No, I think I'm just gonna play the safe route. I'm just gonna take the safe out. This should just be. I mean this should just wait. Bishop d5, queen e5, rook a3, rook f8, queen d4, rook a rook b takes f2, I take, rook f takes f2, I just take the queen. He trades, I take e6. He takes okay. I mean this this just this this has to be winning. It's pretty safe too. I mean queen e5 is the only move, and I mean if I can't win this endgame up two pawns, I should just quit chess. He's he has queen e5. That's that's the obvious move. Um or queen f5, I guess, as well. But I take, he takes, I take with check, and I take the rook, and I'm up two pawns. If I can't win four versus two, where he also has an open king, uh oh. He goes there. That's not what I expected. I don't really, I mean, that's not what I expected at all. Um, now, again, I can also just take the pawn and play the same end game. But queen d4 takes, takes is also winning. Queen d4 takes, takes, that's got to be winning. Yes. So wait, queen d4, he takes, I take with check, and then I take, and then he loses a3, that wins, so. And if he goes back to f8, I take with check. That's game over. Yes, there we go. Perfect. Like, queen e7, I take with check. Can't take, he loses the rook, and I mean, now now it's just over. All right, there we go. There we go. That is just what the doctor ordered. I mean, I guess theoretically he can still move the king or something, but like king g7, but then queen, I mean, this is all just very, very lost. I can even probably just sack all the material and take a3. So no, no need. And again, you take your hand off the cursor. Okay, now I take with check. If he takes, he loses. He goes king h7. I mean, I don't really know. I mean, is he trying to... I think he's just playing on out of desperation at this point. I don't think there's really anything more to it than that. Um, um What's the easiest way to win? Is the, I guess I could just create the wooden shield. Why not? Just keep the wooden shield in play and just, just win the game. That's a good old wooden shield. This is over. Yeah, I'm going to win the game pretty soon. I don't know when he'll resign, but we're, we're going to win. 
Very surprising that he played rook b8 Laquang. I mean, I guess maybe he maybe he didn't see bishop h7 or something. I, I don't really know why he did that, though. He goes rook b4. I mean, I just go here, guard the bishop, attack the pawn. Again, I'll play e4, create the wooden shield, and it's just completely winning. Okay, he plays there. Not even really that concerned. I guess I'll just go e4. Again, consolidate the wooden shield in the middle of the board. And again, it's just an extra bishop. Just an extra bishop here. That's, that's all it is. He's going to resign here. I mean, now, now you're going to lose the A pawn, so there's really nothing left to even play for. I assume he'll resign here or within the next two moves. He resigns. Very good. Very, very good, you guys. Very good. Yeah. All right, we got the dub. One up, one down. I think that means we play against Fabulous Fabiano in the semifinals, if I'm not mistaken. Um, all right, let me turn off the cam. And we should be getting the uh, the next game popping up pretty soon, I think. Um yeah, it's pretty good, pretty good. I mean, I'm just surprised he blundered it. But again, also let me go back here and let's take a quick look at the game. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let's take a quick look at the game. Um, let's take a quick look. Okay, so, okay, this position's about equal. He goes here, goes here. Knight e5 is the correct move. I think you. Oh wait, you guys can't see it. Sorry. Um, wait, no, that's not the right thing. Uh, there we go. Knight e5 is the right move. This is all equals. Ah, computer actually thinks black is better in this end game. So, I mean, this is what I spent all my time on. Takes here, queen, takes, takes. Because now I have queen d2, I take, and I hit the bishop here. And, like, bishop e2, I go queen h4 and create the mate threat. And that's ggs. Um, but, actually, after takes queen d4... Oh, he can go a3. I only saw this line with bishop e6. I thought knight f3 of a3. And I feel like there's some kind of dirty trick, like queen h4 or queen d3, like some kind of mate and so i thought f6 check king g8 knight d4 was just bishop f7 rook a1 i should be fine and i thought there was no risk this is the whole line that i calculated when i when i spent all that time on playing queen b1 and knight e5 uh but apparently i actually my calculation was wrong because here after king h7 queen d4 he can actually go a3 tough move to find but apparently the pawn is just going fast and yeah i mean and then actually after i mean just after this horrible blunder e8 you guys can see it's just like the bar goes to the moon just a huge blunder and he just loses so good stuff we got the dubs so it's it's all all very very good um we're waiting for the next game so i will change the scene okay let's go okay here we go move everything out of the way oh okay plays e4 let's go e5 probably we're gonna oh he's gonna play italian okay Ah, uh, Fabian wants to play this, or is he going to play Scotch Gambit? No, he's going to go for this one. Okay, let's make a check. Uh huh. He's going to play Knight BD2. Now, I actually have played this line myself with White. Knight E4 is a move and D5. Both of these lines are playable. Um, it's just a question of which one I want to play here. That's really the question. I'm trying to think which which one I want to play. Knight E4, D5, Knight E7 is is relatively considered to be okay but it's a little bit sharp d5 is generally a little bit safer per se but they're both playable so i'm just trying to think which one i want to play hmm i think i'll play this one yeah now i mean i'm gonna play this like anish did this is what anish played against me i believe takes you take and you go 97 d6 i think you take he plays h4 D6 is what I played against Anish to make a draw. So Fabian is playing H4, so he's trying to show some kind of weird prep, which I'm not familiar with. So this is something unusual. Hmm. Let's see. I guess D6 has to be the right move to activate the bishop. So this is some kind of very deep prep by Fabiano. Um. Hmm. What is this exactly? Hmm. I mean, h6 is the obvious move here for a human. I mean, I'm guessing this is all still some kind of prep. Yeah, this, this looks like some kind of very, very vague prep. Um, but this is this is actually potentially very scary too. So I do really need to pay attention here. It goes rook g1. Again, this is some kind of weird prep. And I'm sure that I'm completely fine here. But again, Fabiano is banking on this being a rapid game. 
fact that we're two humans, that there, there are chances of weird things happening. Um, huh. Huh. Kind of weird line. Very surprised that Fabiano is using deep prep like this in, in, in a game like this, so I will say that. Um, hmm. Huh. Ah, oh, this is this is annoying. In in in, in, a, in a rapid game, this is very annoying to face. I mean, the thing is, okay, c six g four takes g five. Bishop g bishop g three bishop g four rook g four queen g eight. I mean, this is complicated. This is very complex. Hmm. <sighs> Let's see. B5 is obviously a move. Really don't know what I'm supposed to do here, honestly. It's just hard to play. I think I'm going to do it. Let's see what he does. I'm going to play B5. Oh, is this actually the best move? Fabiano plays Bishop B3 immediately, which actually tells me that, that mu this might be the best line. Which I'm surprised by. Actually, very surprised by that. Um, very surprising. Bishop f5, g4, bishop e4 looks like a reasonable move. And queen e3. Okay, I should just focus and stop talking. Talking too much here. Very tricky. Three G H six. G H six knight f five. Hmm. <sighs> Very tough to figure this out. Two. Let's see, what are the options? I'm trying to go G4. lot of time so I also have to make some moves here even though I, sh I know that I'm fine it's just very hard for a human to figure this out versus a computer Getting a little bit low on time, but I shouldn't really panic yet. Ah, oh, it's so hard to play this in a rapid game. This is very annoying. I guess I'll go. Jeez, is this all some kind of prep by Fabiano, or am I just insane? This is some kind of ridiculous prep, I feel like. Or he's just bluffing. I mean, he could be bluffing, but I don't really... Fabiano is not a bluffing kind of guy. So this is really annoying to face. Yeah, Fabiano is not a guy who bluffs generally, so... This is annoying. G5, trade, trade. Bishop C2, G6... I had a five runs into F3 maybe as well. Back. I just don't have time here to figure this out. This is the biggest problem here. I had a five F3 looks. Oh, 
that looks bad for lack of a better way of putting it. I mean, I can maybe take, I mean, again, I can probably take and go here, but it's just such a computer position. G4. Four is no good. C5, I mean, some kind of silly computer line. Um, I guess. I'm just gonna play it. I, I don't have time. This is all this is all some kind of preparation by Fabiano. So, I mean, the only upside to what's happened so far in this game is that the fact that Fabiano has played all these moves really fast tells me that that I've probably played the best moves up to this point. However, now he thinks, which means C5 is probably a bad move, and it's not the best computer move. Yeah, my instinct is that he's thinking now. Like, all these moves are so unusual to play that it means I played all the best moves up to this point. And the good thing about that is that means Fabiano has had to burn some actual serious over-the-board preparation, which is also a good thing. Because even if I lose these games online, sure, they matter, and obviously I don't want to lose them. But if you make your opponents use... Okay, whatever. If this is bad, it's bad. I'm going to try. I'm going to go for it. Let's see. The heck is this some this is still prep jeez seriously oh my god but i have f6 maybe <sighs> this is insane Did i literally just walk into like some like 20 move line of prep of fabiano's here Maybe I had some knight C. Oh, did I have knights? No, knight C to knight H6. I think I walked into some like ridiculous prep by Fabiano. I, I actually think so. I think I did. <laughs> Insane. I think I literally just walked into like some like 20 move like obscure line of prep. Yeah, it goes bishop C2 and I'm probably just lost. Just insane. Yeah, this is just insane. <laughs> crazy. Just crazy. Oh. Games like this are why sometimes I hate chess. I have to admit, like games like this are why sometimes I really just hate chess, where you walk into some kind of ridiculous prep but I mean, I still maybe have some chance. I can take and go like queen c8 and knight d5. I mean, obviously it's bad, but how bad is it? I mean, what do, what do I have here? One, two, three. I mean, maybe I, that's why I was supposed to go c6 and open up the center because here his king is just very safe, unfortunately. Ugh, disgusting. I mean, it's obviously bad, but if I can just hang on for like another like 10 moves, maybe I can find some way to save it. But this is some kind of very dank theory. Okay, because I have to go here, only move. <sighs> 96 queen g8 maybe. Yeah, again, I, I, I sus like I said, I suspect that there's something in here that probably a computer finds the best line and draws, but for a human, especially in a rapid game, just too icky, too hard to find. But the good news is now I can look at this line before I play in Berlin. That's, that's the upside. Now, for when I play the actual over-the-board event, I can now look at this line and figure out exactly what I should do to improve upon it, which is, which is a good thing. Two thirty-four, seven minutes. I mean, just too much. Ugh, frustrating. I guess I, I do. I take with the queen or the knight is also an interesting question. If he takes, takes, takes. Queen h6, queen h8. Who's f4? I guess I take. Kind of an only move, obviously. I do have queen h7 and rook g8, maybe or something. Like, I'm sure I'm in bad shape here. What? Am I in bad shape? Wait. 
If he takes with the queen, he loses the pawn on d5 too. I mean, like, I feel like I should be losing here somehow. But again, I mean, if I get some h5, queen f5, there's some, like, some small prayer of hope that I can survive this. I should just stop talking, though, and focus solely on this position. So I'm going to need a bit of a miracle to survive. Oh, do I have h5 here? Wait, wait, wait a second. h5, g5, queen, g6. Wait a second. I think I might have something. gh5, rook h5, queen d1, trade, tr ah, I feel like h5 might be a move. Let me think. Um, no, he's got knight g5 in between, so it doesn't work. Um, hmm. Knight d5, f5, knight b4, maybe? I mean, again, probably too impossible for me as a human to figure this out, but... <sighs> Just too difficult. Maybe I can run the king around? King e8, knight d7, king d7, takes, takes... Rook d1, probably bad. Uh, I can also go here, here, queen d5. Okay, just stop talking and focus. Knight 8, queen d5. d1, queen a2, maybe? Oh, whatever. I'm just going to go for it. I, I don't have the time to figure this out. I'm going to play for something where I try to get some counterplay. And it's probably no good, but I, I can't really. I'm too low on the clock to, to not do this. Queen e2, I have rook b8, maybe? I have a feeling maybe rook b8 or something was okay, but again, I've got no time here. It's just too hard to play for a human. I have a feeling when I look with the computer, I bet it's going to say even here instead of king e8 that probably somehow I'm okay. But it's just too hard with no time on the clock. The good thing is time is slightly evening, not evening out. I'm still down a bunch of time, but there's some chance. I mean, maybe that I can, I mean, I can take and maybe take a two and just play on. I mean, at least I can hope for something here. Some, some form of hopium, I guess. Although again, I bet rook b8 was still okay somehow. I have a feeling rook b8, rook b7 or something. But again, I don't have the time. I shouldn't be talking so much. Just focus on the position and try to figure it out. It was a4. That's a strange move, actually. Um, that doesn't feel right. Wait. That doesn't seem right. Wait, that does not feel right somehow. But again, now I've got no time, which is makes it just impossible to play. No time at all. Um, hmm. Don't want to go b4. b8 is no good. Knight d5, f5. Yeah, guess I'll play this. I don't know. I don't even know if it's good. I just have no time. A4 is a very nasty move because I don't really know what. I don't know if I'm supposed to go B4 here, King D7. I mean, just too hard. But I guess I play for counterplay at least here. Because if he trades, I take and I'm okay. Again, I'm down so much time though. It's 10-2, so I can't really get below 15 seconds or I'm just going to lose. A pre-move, it's a safe pre-move.
Oh, does it just lose too? Time. Here, this might just be losing. I mean, again, it's just impossible to play this position with no time on the clock. A king eight maybe was better, but I just I can't. Oh, 94, whoa. That move I did not expect. Um, uh, just, just too hard to play this position. <sighs> I just gotta go and just pray. Too hard to play. I mean, I can maybe take. Got no time. <sighs> Just got no time here. It's impossible to play. I'm sure this is losing somehow, but. Six? Wait a second. Wait. Uh, it's... it's too hard. It's impossible to play this. Oh, I could have taken and gone king a5 too. What? Oh no, he has f6. Eh, it's all probably losing. <sighs> Just too hard to play this with no time on the clock. I guess I'm just losing anyway here. No time. Yeah, I lose by one tempo. I can't stop the pawns here. Just too hard to play with no time. I have to take. This is Kingy too, also. <sighs> Frustrating. Well, yeah, it's lost. Oh, it goes. I have to look at this one with the engine. Let me just turn on the engine. Four. Bishop g4, knight h4. Queen d7 is just good for black. For c6. Uh. Yeah, it's like that's how it goes. Just how it goes, unfortunately. Just not meant to be. King eight was actually the best move. Yeah, I mean, basically it was completely fine, 
But on the flip side, I made Fabiano burn an actual idea that I think is very interesting. So I guess I'm happy from that standpoint. Obviously, I'm not happy about losing this game. Yeah, in a classical game, I would have gone C6. I was just worried about G4. But the bar... Okay, the bar is actually very confused by this. Hmm, the bar is actually kind of confused by this. So I think I need to let the engine get depth. Hmm, actually, you guys can see. Yeah, the computer is not actually sure. Let me let it get some depth here. I will get my revenge. I'm not worried about that. But I'm actually I'm actually kind of shocked that Fabiano wasted a true idea in this game. This is a very serious idea that he wasted. It's Because the evaluation is just changing. Oh, I'm very... I actually... Yeah, the, the, the valuation is changing. Okay, okay. Yeah, no. Wasn't there a puzzle rush at the end with Rook A1? No. Find a prep, learn to use it, win. I mean, it's there's more to it than that, but... Yeah, I mean, that's life. Yeah. Now I can use this in Berlin. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the thing is, is that of course these games matter, but I'd much rather, I'd much rather lose this game than get surprised by this in like Berlin and lose a game there. Much prefer to lose this game. So it's actually useful to know. But this is the other thing that I would say about Fabi, not, not even just in general, but about Fabiano, is he's very good at finding these hidden ideas um, in a way that a lot of other players aren't. Like his preparation has always been really, really good. Um, so, huh. Okay. Hmm. This is ridiculous prep. Yeah. No, it, it is. It's just good prep. And of course, in a rapid game, zero chance. I mean, I guess I should have played C6, but like I said, I mean, this G4, or Bishop D3, you see the bar even? It starts off really good for black, but the bar even is changing too. What is the preparation here? This whole H4 line. Um, This is... This whole thing with H4, H5, and castles is is, a, is weird prep. Um... Yeah, thank you to Anna Chess for the raid with 421. Thank you so much. Yeah, this is interesting. Hmm. I'll make my mental notes and, and take a look at it. Yeah, H4 is not in the top five engin engine moves. I mean, like I've said, like I said, Fabiano is very good at finding these hidden ideas in these random positions, just sitting at home all day and looking at looking at like these deep lines where like computer doesn't recommend it. But if you let the computer think long enough and you're using a supercomputer, you will find these ideas. Um, so it's actually not that insane but again i mean this is a sacrifice i make as well i mean as you have to keep in mind i make the sacrifice by streaming instead of playing like i don't have time to do these sorts of things um so yeah no but everyone does it i mean any professional chess player does it that's what we do as pro players but i will have to look at this line but you know this is, do you know why i'm actually kind of a little bit bothered by this is because also is king king f1 King F1 even a move here? Yeah, I'm actually I'm I'm actually kind of bothered by this line now. I mean, of course, using the computer engine is not good enough, but I have but this is actually bothersome. Huh. Hmm. Like, even Rook G1's not the top computer move. Yeah, this is actually... I didn't go Bishop G4. I mean, I wonder what he would have done if I had played Bishop G4 here. I mean, I guess this is a... See, even now, the engine says zeros again. Like, the engine... The engine is, like... The engine even is not completely convinced here. Yeah, th th this is something where I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to go home and use use my actual, like, real computer to do analysis because this is not something that the the, uh, the engine on the site can figure out. This is very clearly um, something that I have to use a supercomputer on. So I can't actually give you guys, like, a clear evaluation on this whole thing. No, this is... Uh, th no, I'll have to use a real computer for this. Yeah. Yeah. Supercomputer? Yeah, because as, as I said, you guys, if you look at this position on the website, it's giving black a big edge at first, and now the eval bar is coming all the way down. Yeah, the, the eval bar is going all the way down here. So... Uh, did I say I have a supercomputer? Yes, I do. Um, why do you use a prep here? I mean, I guess seventy five hundred dollars, but uh, but still a little bit, little bit weird, little bit weird. 
yeah i lost the game and as i said it's best of one unfortunately so that's that's all she wrote um huh yeah this, b5 it actually says but see even here look at the computer it doesn't recommend knight h4 like see on the weak computer knight h4 is not a move and then fabiano played it instantly so yeah this is just something that that i have to use uh i have to use a supercomputer on to review it because this is this is some ridiculous this is some ridiculous stuff yeah it says rook h4 and queen f4 knight h4 is not not a move like you guys can see the lines right uh you can see the top two lines and knight h4 is not even a move here and then he plays it yeah and see now the bar says zeros yeah yeah no this is i mean this is very clearly something he spent a lot of time looking at 100 100 percent. he looked at it with uh with a supercomputer no doubt rookie eight it says yeah i mean again computer's not computer's not going to get the depth here uh, with the with this computer but yeah this is very this is very clearly some some deep prep um but that's how it goes yeah uh, you run a supercomputer uh i bought a uh, i bought about a twenty thousand dollar computer for chess uh three years ago now and it's still i only use it for chess so no actually supercomputers are, are a serious thing uh, i spent twenty thousand dollars on it so no it's not a joke actually like this this is the thing like for example I'll, I'll give you an example so if we get to this position and i have no problem saying this of course um but if you if you get this position if I, let's just say i plug this position in on a regular computer for example it might show this h4 move or this position after castles as being okay for black at some point but it's going to probably take like 10 times longer so for example if you plug in h4 i'm betting on a supercomputer after d6 h5 h6 castles it probably already says this is equal for white Whereas on this computer, without um, without uh, without any depth, it's saying that black is better. So it might take this this computer on the website, like let's just say, ten to twenty minutes to calculate that this position is equal for white. Whereas on a supercomputer, after like a minute, it might say it's equal. So you, again, how long are you really going to let a computer sit in this position to do the calculation? That's really what it comes comes down to. Um, and that's why when you have supercomputers or why people spend money on supercomputers is because you're not going to sit in this position for 20 minutes and analyze it because if, if you look at the computer evaluation it's going to say black is better but if you let it sit for a minute and it says that then you know there's something to look at um in this position versus say if you sit there for 10 20 minutes it just says black is better you're not going to you're not going to calculate it um now i know what it'll take for the candidates well i mean this isn't the norm this isn't the line that i actually was initially going to play so uh, but i played it because i actually kind of also want to see what his idea was because i did recall this line i guess anish i actually played d6 castles d5 and drew a game against him in um in the fide grand prix in haunty Monsisk, russia in 2015. so i also kind of wanted to see what fabiano's idea was because as i recalled i thought this line was supposed to be completely fine for black but now i know it's not and of course in berlin assuming berlin happens i'll be much more much more prepared for it so uh, so it's all good. It's actually all good. I'm, I'm like I said, I'm very happy if if I lose every every time um, in these openings in the RCC. But I do find in Berlin, I'll take that. I'll take that over this any day of the week, hundred uh, percent. Too slow, yeah. No, it's actually that's why people spend money on supercomputers. I know it's not something we touch on very often during the stream because, of course, generally you don't you don't walk into this stuff. And and if it does happen, it's usually in like meltwater or something, uh, where it's a slightly slower time control but uh but that's why you, that's why you have supercomputers because with a supercomputer actually you know what i'm gonna even on this computer let me open chess space on a new tab uh or a new window let me open chess space i want to see what the computer says uh control n give me a new board in one second here we go bishop c5 c3 knight six d4 takes takes bishop d2 default kvitzer takes takes 94 d5 takes takes takes, takes 97 h4 control flip like actually uh, even on this on the local computer here it already says after h4 it says equals so it says equals um it says equal with stockfish on on the local computer already which is why again that's the thing given props he did what he had to do no of course fabiano had great prep and he won the game my only thing is i'm surprised he wasted this prep on a random game in the rcc versus like using it in the candidates because i don't think this position let me check let me check after h4 has this ever been played online database zero games have ever been played with h4 so i'm i'm just very surprised that he used this prep um in a, in a game that objectively doesn't matter that's why i'm actually very surprised by it um 
that's the reason that I'm surprised by it is that I just figure if you have a great idea a great novelty like H4 trying to use it in a random RCC instead of candidates I don't know that's just to me that's just a little surprising um because a world championship match is worth a million dollars uh RCC is worth 7500 so again maybe it's a bunch of ideas and it's just one of the ones he had but I am legitimately surprised he used it here because unless I'm mistaken I mean I'll go back into chess base and I'll, I'll double check with the online database but let me go here c3 knight of 64 let me just double check take uh 94 wait knight bd2 94 you online database let's see it's all been played d5 has been played takes bishop d2 takes queen d2 97 yeah there are a bunch of games I'll, I'll i'll tell you guys exactly the breakdown there are, there are 49 games in this position that have been played 34 of the games have had d6 being played instead of h4 there are nine games with castles castles by the way both short and long has been played castles long was played by uh was played by maxi matlikov against Grigory Oparin recently castles was played by shock against sergey so these are not weak players by the way um queen f4 has been played in two games queen f5 queen g5 has been played in one um and that's it castles is three games as well so that's why i'm surprised um just because this is a very well-known position it's been played by many top gms engine line after c6 is dry what is i mean i guess okay let, let's let's take a look at this as well maybe he thinks the idea wouldn't hold up in classical also true i suppose but already after rook g1 it's kind of hard to play it's already very hard to play for for black like I'm not running my real engine but already here I don't know I think this is just very hard to play for black I mean f5 maybe is a move but f5 allows 94 96. yeah it's king h8 is yeah king h8 is equals or no actually king h8 92 white is no white's better no see this is why you, you can't analyze this without a supercomputer because like even these evaluations are wrong like king h8 is equal and then it's not equal so i'm not even gonna bother i'm not even gonna bother analyzing trying to analyze because without a supercomputer like see already it says white is better so so like it's just yeah it's too shifty um it's too shifty but yeah hmm hmm yeah why not bring the computer to LA um because actually it costs costs a lot of money to run but yeah this is I mean yeah I'm not even gonna go into this I will I'll, I'll look at this I'll, I'll look at this um later but I will say that this is also why ideas are at such a premium in chess because an idea like this now that it's been played everybody's gonna go home and look at this line tonight maybe not everybody but a lot of top players are gonna be since there's no meltwater are gonna go look at this line tonight and they're they're basically gonna look at it and by tomorrow morning this won't be playable again for white or everyone will know how to equalize uh in this line so that's why these ideas are at such a premium because when you play an idea like this everyone's gonna look at it and by the next day it's no longer valid so or not valid but it's no longer something you can play for a win and that's why um that's why opening ideas you really have to pick the moments you use them very carefully it's like it's like a groundbreaking yeah no it is it's a great idea and I don't doubt that probably someone already had thought of this idea but still again now everyone's gonna go home and they're gonna look at all the alternatives and probably within an hour even like if I took an hour right now to look at this I would know how to equalize um without any trouble so that's that's why when you have these ideas you have to um you have to be very selective when you use them and that's also why for someone like Ali Reza who's playing the candidates he some he maybe he doesn't want to play these other tournaments because you want to save these ideas um it's really important that you save your ideas uh for critical moments that's also why when people are wondering um in terms of Ali Reza and why he's not playing uh that's probably part of it because Ali Reza is doing his prep looking for ideas and you don't want to burn any of the ideas that you have because the, the 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 original ideas in chess are very few and far between um what does prep mean it means memorizing computer moves mostly yeah mostly that's what it means um if there imagine if there's no computers and it would take months or years to find out how to equalize absolutely yeah now I will of course watch the other game um even though I lost obviously 